You're probably thinking that there is no way that this strange looking spider could cure anyone's arachnophobia, right? But what makes this spider so special is that just like with any other fear, the closer we look at it, the more interesting it becomes. I wanna make the case that if we give this bizarre little spider a chance, it might just break your fear once and for all. But in order to do that, I think we need to explore what makes us afraid of spiders in the first place. Arachnophobia is one of the most common fears worldwide. Up there with snakes and sharks, spiders are the stuff of nightmares for millions of people around the globe. I should know, I used to be one of them. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I have dedicated my life to uncovering the secrets of the natural world to show how reality is often stranger than fiction. But in order to do that, I've had to face more than one of my own deep set fears. For me, it was weird because I've always loved insects and other arthropods like crustaceans, crayfish, isopods, things like that. But spiders, spiders creeped me the heck out. If one of them was on or near me, I had a visceral reaction. But what's crazy is I learned this from my parents. I grew up seeing my mom lose her mind if a spider was in the house. And as a little impressionable kid, you see your parents freaking out about spiders, you start to think, oh, maybe, maybe spiders are something I should be scared of too. And this seems to be true in many cases of arachnophobia too. We don't know exactly what causes it. For some people, there might have been some traumatic experience as a child with spiders, or, and like in my case, they probably learned from their parents. And it definitely differs from a person to person basis, but there's one thing we're pretty sure about. Arachnophobia is cultural. It's not an evolved trait. So you're probably like, okay, Spencer, how do we know that arachnophobia isn't an evolved trait? Aren't there tons of dangerously venomous spiders? And you're right, there are. But the human race originated in Africa somewhere between two and six million years ago. And aside from a really, really rare spider that can kill people, that isn't something early humans would have seen very often, there aren't any lethally venomous spiders in Africa. There are lots of lethally venomous snakes, so there is a pretty good evolutionary argument for a fear of snakes, but not spiders. In fact, the first continents that humans spread to after Africa were Asia and Europe, which also lack lethally venomous spiders. It wasn't until humans settled in Australia and the Americas, which happened in the last 100,000 years, that encounters with deadly venomous spiders actually became more prevalent. Now, this doesn't mean that your fear is any less valid. It just means that we have more context to work with as to where it came from and how to potentially move past it. If arachnophobia is learned, it can also be unlearned. This is actually not a bad thing. A lot of the fears that we learn from our parents, we have to unlearn anyway throughout our lives in order to grow as individuals and to progress as a society. Imagine if the Wright brothers were too afraid to launch their first flying machine, or if Albert Einstein was too afraid to challenge the status quo of physics, our understanding of the world and our access to technology would be completely different if people hadn't pushed past their fears. In fact, even this channel that you're watching right now, if I hadn't deprogrammed myself from fears that I had learned growing up, I probably would never have uploaded my first video and we wouldn't be here today. Speaking of, if you're enjoying watching these videos and discovering the secrets of the natural world to see how weird reality really is, consider subscribing. I'm actually in South Florida right now, searching for one of America's rarest and most dangerous snakes, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. It's gonna be quite an adventure and I'd be really happy to have you. This very journey has brought me to the sandy scrub habitats of southeastern Florida on a bit of a side quest. Along my adventures, there are certain spiders that are so unique that they can serve as ambassadors for their kind, especially among those who fear them. One such spider is the ogre face spider we're after today, and by scanning the scrub oaks and palmettos, I'm hoping to find one of the strangest spiders in the world to show you how it can settle your fears for good. Perfect, that's exactly what I'm looking for, right here. Oh, he's even got his net out. That is the iconic net casting behavior of the ogre face spider. There we go. Easier to get a better look at the spider too. Man, these things are weird. Look at that guy, like a walking stick, cellar spider, 
hybrid. One of my favorites and one of the weirdest in the entire world. Come here, buddy. Probably thinking, Spencer, this one is really not that cute. I, I, I'm not buying it. This, this is not going to cure my arachnophobia. But as with most fears, if we actually face them head on, put them under the microscope, and really take a closer look at the thing that we're afraid of, sometimes we'll see that it's not all that bad. And this is a perfect spider to do that with. What I have right here is the ogre face spider. And a closer look reveals that, yeah, I'll agree, they're, they're not very cute, but they are super, super weird looking. And that's kind of the point. I wanna make the case that these spiders are just so weird and so bizarre that they are actually one of the perfect spiders for us to use as an example of why we shouldn't fear these eight-legged creatures. Have a look at that face right there. It's where it gets its name. That head is almost entirely eyes, and they look kind of goofy. They're really big and bulging, almost like a, like an anime character who's been shocked by something. If we look at that little ridge they have on the top of their head, it's almost like cartoonish, angry eyes. So they're like these really cartoonish, angry, bulging eyes on a weird looking stick-shaped spider. And even right there, you can already see, okay, this it's a lot less intimidating when you think of it like that. But those eyes, and that weird face that it gets its name from are actually what make this spider so unbelievably unique. These guys have eyes that function like no other animal in the animal kingdom. We've seen wolf spiders and stuff out here and their eyes glow back at us in the dark because they have a special membrane that helps them amplify the light in the environment to give them really good night vision. But these guys have even better night vision than the wolf spiders. It's thought they have some of the best night vision of any arthropod and possibly any animal, though it is definitely hard to fully quantify that when you're looking at something this size. They have super, super sensitive retinas, the specialized cells that help them detect light. And that means even the slightest movement in their environment, in the pitchest of black of night, they can see that movement and they can catch it. See, the way we found this guy, he was sitting dangling from a palmetto with those front two pairs of legs extended in front of his body. Notice when you're looking at him now, those front two pairs are actually a lot longer than the rest of his legs. And that's actually perfect for his survival strategy. The eyes obviously help him see in the dark. These legs are reaching out. He builds these silk nets that he stitches together and he holds them right in front on these two pairs of legs. And this is almost like a fisherman casting a net out into the water. They're sitting in layers of vegetation. Now this guy was on the bottom layer, but I've seen him further up, usually to about chest height even. They're in these layered chunks of vegetation where there's these little fly-through zones. And insects will go either horizontally or even vertically from one layer to another. And these guys can catch them and eat them. By asking, okay, well, it's a spider, it eats insects. Is it venomous? These actually are venomous, but what's crazy is one of their closest evolutionary relatives in the spider world are actually the Uliborids. You know that? No. <laughs> I know that gasp. Um, one of their closest relatives are actually the Uliborids, the hackled orb weavers, the only family of spiders that completely lacks venom. We often throw around the idea of a non-venomous spider for the vast majority of spiders that are not dangerous to people, but the truth is most spiders actually do use venom to some degree. But these guys, considering their closest living relatives are actually not venomous, I would have to assume that their venom is probably not that dangerous to people. Uh, and probably not that toxic at all. They're really just eating small prey, strangling it with their web, and their venom is really more for helping them digest their food outside their body than it is like rapidly killing them. Those webs they build are strong and those nets are super, super intricate. Once you're caught in this creature's embrace, you are not escaping unless you're just too big. I would have to imagine their venom is not super, super serious, but I can talk about that till I'm blue in the face with all kinds of spiders. Most of the time, the, the things that we're scared of with spiders is not that they're dangerous. We find them creepy, we find them gross, we find them startling. But let's look at this guy's movement here. He's not super fast, he's not super erratic, he's not super frightening. It's a small little spider with a goofy looking face. In fact, the more we look at him, the more interesting he actually is. Look at that stick-like appearance. It's almost like you took a walking stick and mixed it with the cellar spiders you have in your basement. They're super camouflaged and they're using that during the day to hide. 
This guy actually, he tucked himself under the palmetto when I startled him, and he was actually kind of hard to see before I was able to startle him back out of his hiding place to be able to catch him. He's bouncing there a little bit, swaying like a walking stick would to look like a twig swaying in the breeze. For most of the day, they're relying on that camouflage. You can even see on his abdomen there, a little bit of modeling, a little bit of texturing to make him look just like a piece of a stick or the underside of a palm. And that keeps him safe from the things that would like to turn him into a meal. But that's not even the weirdest thing about them. See, I mentioned the eyes earlier, right? Super, super, super sensitive. What happens to them during the day? These guys have a really messed up life strategy. You, you'll almost feel bad for them. Actually, you probably will feel bad for them after this video. See, have you ever tried staring directly into the sun? I, I don't recommend this, so don't, don't try this at home, please. But if you've ever accidentally looked in the sun for too long when you're driving or when you're just out and about, it hurts, right? Your, your eyes are kind of like, ow, and you have that big blank spot in your vision for a couple minutes before it like fades away. Imagine if your eyes were a hundred times more sensitive to light and you glance at the sun, you would literally fry your retina. And that is exactly what happens to this spider every single day of its life. Their eyes are so sensitive. They don't have eyelids. They don't have special membranes that are amplifying light like the wolf spiders. They just have a really sensitive retina. And the brightness of the sun is so intense that when it comes up in the morning, these spiders literally go blind. So you're probably asking, okay, well, how do they hunt then? They only get like one night of hunting before they're blind. That doesn't sound like a very effective survival strategy in, in uh, especially in Florida wilderness of all places, it's kind of a tough place to survive. And you'd be right. So these spiders have a very interesting solution to that problem. They regenerate their eyes every single night. As soon as the sun goes down, that layer of retina starts to quickly grow back. And that actually baffles scientists. We're not sure how they do it. It is going to be super useful for hopefully figuring out how we can restore vision to people who have lost it during their lives. The better we understand these amazing little spiders, which are maybe a little scary at first glance, but actually super weird and super fascinating, the more we get to know them, the better we can advance our understanding of biology as a whole and solve a lot of crazy scientific problems. Who would have thought that one little weird looking spider would have all those secrets packed inside? I sure wouldn't have. But hopefully that makes you just a little bit more appreciative of the eight-legged creatures that we share our planet with. And I know this one is definitely one of my favorites. One of the most unique and beautiful creatures in the world, the ogre face spider, has become one of my favorite arthropods of all time. Their bizarre hunting strategy and insane eyes are enough to prove beyond a doubt that if we push past our fears and take a closer look at the weird little things that surround us every day, the world actually gets a lot bigger and a lot more fascinating. And the world of spiders is even bigger than just this odd little ogre face spider too. If you want to venture deeper into the secret world of spiders, what if I told you there was a giant purple spider hiding in the dense jungles of the tropics? I recently went on a quest to find that very spider in the tropical dry forests of Ecuador. If you want to see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.